This is the last of the six videos in our series, The Gospel in Miniature. Uh, and I thought I would um, host it from, from here in, in the, the main room uh, of our church where we hold most of our services. You can hear it's quite a busy church. There's somebody putting up some signs out there. We've just had the window cleaners uh, coming in out there. So it's, it's a busy hub of a place and there's all sorts of things going on. But when we hold our services, there are some basic elements that you'll always find in our services. And, and that's why I thought it'd be good for you to come in here because I can actually show you what I think is probably one of the key pieces of furniture, if I can put it like that, in, in the church. It, it's this, it's this piece of furniture here. Uh, and any church that's worth its salt will have one of these, uh, I should think, it's, it's a pulpit. And the whole function of a pulpit is twofold. One is so that it can um, hold one of these. It doesn't have to be one that this is this big. I have a big one because obviously my eyesight is a little bit a bit uh, tested in that area. So it's nice big letters for me. But you've got a Bible. You, you want to have a, a pulpit which can place your Bible on. And the reason you want your Bible somewhere where you can see it and read it is because what you do on a pulpit is that you preach. This is where we preach and we preach the word. We preach the Bible. That's the, that's the, the purpose of people coming to these services, to come and worship God together and to hear the word of God, hear, hear the message. Now preaching is quite a, what can I say? It's quite a controversial thing to do in a way, because just in itself, preaching suggests that what I'm going to say has authority. What I have to say is, is true, it, it's right, it's good, and it's something that um, people need to believe and is good for them to believe and is helpful and it will it will it will enhance their lives it will do good to society that there is no harm in it there's no uh it's it's so when you preach something you have to be really sure that it really is good news and the the word gospel literally means good news see these pulpits are set up to preach the gospel preach good news to people um, it sounds arrogant, doesn't it? In the 21st century, when we have such a, a multicultural, uh, diverse society that we live in, that anybody should stand up somewhere and say, you know, this is the truth. Uh, there is no other way. Um, this is what you must believe. But that is, that's what the Apostle Paul says. You remember in the, in the reading uh, from this chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which is where we've been focusing our attention, Paul says, uh, by this gospel you are saved. So in that statement, this gospel, he's making the claim that another gospel, another message, uh, will not have the same saving power that the, the message that he is preaching has. You're not going to get saved by another gospel. This is the gospel. Now, it does sound like arrogance to make that exclusive claim, and, and, and in truth, it, it probably would be arrogance if, if, and here's the big if, if it were not true, if it were not right, if it were not good, if it were not the only way that people could be saved through the conviction and belief and acceptance of, of these things, this, this gospel. And clearly, when I stand up here or other people stand up here and preach, that is precisely what we're saying. Saying that this is it. This is the one and only. Uh, and this bit of furniture and supporting this book gives me an opportunity to, to proclaim that um, in a way uh, as much as possible to reason, to explain to people what it's all about. But because in the end, I want them to believe it because I believe that in believing it, it will be for their salvation, for their, for their good, that it's true, that it's right, and uh, so on. Uh, let me just read the passage out, because I don't think we've read the whole passage out in any of these uh, short videos. Uh, chapter 15, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians, he says, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you take your stand, preaching and believing. By this gospel you are saved, 
if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. You've got to continue to believe it. Otherwise, you've believed in vain. This relationship between preaching and believing, preaching and believing. For what I received, I passed on to you. Now, here's the content of that preaching as of the first importance. Why is it so important? Because it's the only means by which people can be saved. That's why it's so ultimately important that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. We looked at that in the first video, that he was buried. We looked at that in the second video, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. We looked at that in the, in the following video, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the 12, and after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living at the time when this letter was written, though some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James and then all to the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. I think that was uh, video four. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than them all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or there, this is what we preach. And this is what you believed. And that kind of came up in video five. So there are some really key issues there, aren't there? Preaching and believing, the relationship between preaching and believing, and that this is of the first importance, that's it, because our salvation rests on these matters. And that ultimately, um, all of this comes about by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God that we've received the truth. By the grace of God, we have the opportunity to preach it and declare it. By the grace of God, we have a chance uh, to believe and, and be saved. That's our message. So there are five primary issues, aren't there, that are, are raised in this uh, little gospel in miniature in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. And the, the inference here, and the strong inference, is that nothing should be added to it. There's nothing in addition to this that you need to believe to be saved. But in the same way that if you subtract anything from it, uh, that would... Um, dilute the gospel and and the, the playing with fire if you like is that the consequences would be that you would not find yourself uh, the recipient of salvation because an essential component of it has been withdrawn so this is a, a most sober and serious matter for all of us uh, to consider and that's why those five videos each one picks up on those five issues and I just want to encourage you to go back over them look over them again give them some further thought get in touch if you've got any further questions I think it's true to say that um, as you look back over the videos um, it's worth particularly particularly focusing on what does salvation mean and I think it does come out in what we've been saying. What, what, why is salvation? What are we being saved from? And, you know, how are we being saved and so on? That, that's really crucial in, in the videos. And the other thing I think is really important is the, is the phrase, according to the scriptures. Because these five essentials are not saying that there is nothing else that we need to know or nothing else that would enrich our theological understanding. And... All of those other things are found in the scriptures. Everything has to be in accordance with the scriptures and the authority of the Bible is so central to, to that. But, but these are the, the, the matters of first importance listed, but there are secondary issues, there are, are tertiary issues as well. And none of that is to be dismissed, but salvation rests on this narrow head, this narrow point. And the other things are enrichments and enhancements for Christian living, uh, for counsel and wisdom in life. But this is the, the, the axiom of, of, of our salvation. Um, that's, that's probably the last thing I wanted to say. You have to trust the Bible. This is in summary. You have to trust the Bible. You have to believe in the Christ the Bible speaks of. Uh, you have to trust that Christ's work on the cross made atonement for your sin. Uh, you have to believe that he really died uh, in your place 
uh, and that God has now raised him from the dead, that Jesus is alive. Uh, that this was witnessed, his, his resurrection from the dead, and all these other things were witnessed by, by the apostles. And, and the, the people who wrote the New Testament were eyewitnesses of the things of which they speak. Um, and that those people experienced the power of God, the grace of God in their lives. They were themselves uh, converted. They came over to believing these things in the same way as you and I are being called to come over and believe these things. They're not uh, special cases. We are all under the same rule, if you like, the need to repent and turn away from our former ideas and thoughts about these things and put our confidence in these these central tenets of the Christian faith and believe them uh, because we are responding to, to the message that is being uh, preached to us. And the, the only reason that any of us, um, and this kind of undercuts the whole arrogance thing, the only reason any of us are, are able to stand and preach or given the opportunity to hear it is by the grace of God. It's not because anybody's better than anybody else or has some more right to it than anybody else. And that's why we make videos like this in the hope that the word can get out to anybody and everybody, that the grace of God might abound to you, even as it's abounded uh, to us. Well, six short videos, the gospel in miniature. Do take time to review them, uh, won't you please? Subscribe to our channel if that's helpful. Share the videos with others, maybe uh, the collection together, all six is something you can share with others, sitting down, doing a Bible study with somebody or doing it on your own. And we'd love to hear from you if we can help in any way, shape or form with, with coming to terms with this, this message, this single message through which the, the, the eternal salvation of our souls upon which it rests, because it tells us of the Lord Jesus and all he's done uh, for us.